Okay, so these uh, cellular auto automata videos have been a bit haphazard, but um, now that we've looked kind of at an overview, we looked at the Wolfram Elementary CA, and I have the lights on, and we looked at the Game of Life, I want to just kind of give you a quick list of exercises or things you might think about in terms of taking these systems a little bit further as well as tying them back to some of the stuff we looked at in previous videos. So I'll kind of talk through these briefly. It should be a short video and hopefully as time goes on I will be able to expand this or include links to below to some exercises or other implementations that are, are examples of this. So um, one thing that you might start with at first is simply, you know, the CA doesn't have to be a perfect grid of cells. Right? What if it is a whole bunch of tiled triangles um, or arbitrary polygons or some sort of like crazy Escher-like tiling? How would you have this cell state change based on its neighbors? An example of that that I do actually have over here, which you can find as exercise 7.9, is what if you have the cells hexagonal? And you could see each cell, it's a hexagon, has six neighbors. What type of rule sets and what type of things could you do there? So for those of you who are kind of interested in designing your own patterns, if you've made a pattern, could you Make, turn your pattern into a CA to create some sort of animation, et cetera. Um, you also might think about it in 3D, which, I, which I've kind of allude, alluded to previously. What if you had a cube and what would its neighbors be and what could you do in terms of stacking or um, three-dimensional design that way? Another thing that you might think about, and this would be a sort of simple exercise to implement, is probability. What if you said in the game of life, instead of a cell dying when it's overpopulated, when it's overpopulated, it has an 80% chance of dying. What type of behavior would you get if you made the outcomes um, tied to probabilities? And what if those probabilities changed over time? Another thing you might think about is this idea of a continuous um, state. So we've only looked, we've only scratched the surface of states. Zero or one, alive or dead, black or white. If you look, if you look at Wolfram's new kind of science, there is a wide variety of, of implementations with, um, with, with larger states, you know, four possible states, eight possible states. But something you could think about is what if the state is a floating point number between zero and 1.0? Um, the reason that could be useful is you, a lot of things we do in computer programming, the data is, it, it, it could be a map to numbers between 0 and 1.0. But that's something to think about. I mentioned image processing in the previous video, but this is really, really key. So if you're looking for an application of this that you know, might relate to an interactive system, are you doing something with depth data from the Kinect? Are you doing something with live images from a camera, from a movie? Could you create some type of special effect, motion graphics effect, over an image through CA-like rules? And this is nothing new. This is what a blur is. This is what a, a sharpen filter are. And I mentioned stuff about that in the previous video. How could you, this cell, how could a, a, the color be the state of a cell and a new color that changes over time be tied to a neighboring set of colors? So um, uh, I'll try to include a link below to an effect that has to do with a uh, water ripple effect. So if you think of the heights of um, the, uh, a cellular automata being filled with the height of water, and all, if we have a, 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 a lake which all of the water is even and we drop a pebble into it and one part of that water's height changes, to how does that height ripple out into neighboring cells? So could we do a, a water rippling effect with, with CAs? Historical, I think we also mentioned, what if you were to design a CA where its state is not just uh, computed by the states that are in the previous generation, but many generations over time, or a state in the game of life. If it's been alive for a really long time, what would happen to that cell? Or dead for a really long time. Moving cells. I think this is perhaps the one I should star the most. I think one of the reasons for looking at this is, you know, the CAs are interesting unto themselves. And we can do projects with them. They tie to image processing. But really, if we're thinking about it, we had that flocking system in that flocking system, all of these boids, what if we thought of those boids as having a state? And that state somehow defined its behavior, the way it steered, what it was looking for, what it was doing, the way it looked. What if those what if that CA, all, all these are cells essentially, but they're moving and their neighborhood changes based on who happens to be next to them at a given point of time. So this is a way of taking our flocking simulation to the, I hate to say this, but to the next level, right? What if those voids, in addition to following these rules, actually have states that change based on their neighbors and those states drive their motion behaviors? So this is something that I would highly encourage you to look at if you're, if you're kind of in your thinking about expanding the ways you simulate um, systems of moving elements. And then, you know, the, there's, there's also this kind of idea of, of nesting complex systems. 
right? You know, this is the, this is the, you know, the world is a nested place, right? I don't know. I, um, I, uh, uh, organ is a system of, uh, I am a system of organs. This, I'm in a room by myself, but ITP here is a system of people. The world is a system of ITPs. No, but you get the idea, right? People, the city is a system of people. The world is a system of cities. The universe is a system of worlds, right? This idea of nested complex systems. I did a terrible, it was a terrible explanation, but I, I think you're get, getting the point, right? What if you made, what if you had a flocking system where each Boyd is actually a little mini game of, game of life? Or if you made a CA, which is a grid of cells, and each cell on that grid is its own grid of cells. So how, could you, what, what, would, what would you accomplish with nesting complex systems in a way, um, or CAs and flocking systems in a way that could be int pro pro produce interesting results with varying levels of zoom? OK, so this is a, I guess this video was just kind of a list of exercises and thoughts of things you might pursue. I hope that this, um, you can find ideas here for projects you might want to make. And, and I guess I'm hoping with these videos that I'm making, although I haven't really pushed on this, is that videos like this could inspire or kind of um, out of the, a video like this could come, become a little community of projects that people are making and, uh, and links to them that relate back to some of these topics. OK, I hope I was recording. I was. I think this is the last video on CAs. And the next video series will be on fractals. I'm going to press this.